ต่อไปคือหน่วยที่2 business systems ช่วงแรกจะเป็น situation เรื่องที่ 2.1.2 choosing the right form for your business Two point one point two, choosing the right form for your business. Listen to Bertha and Wassin's conversation and do the activity that follows. Situation: Bertha, a Hong Kong businesswoman, is interested in setting up a small flower shop in Bangkok. As she is a foreigner who has just married a Thai man, she does not have any knowledge on how to run a business in Thailand. Although she used to own a small flower shop in Hong Kong, Bangkok is a quite different environment. She goes to see Wasin, her husband's close friend, who is a lawyer. Wasin, can you give me a briefing on business ownership? I think it's quite important for me if I want to set up my own flower shop. Sure. So, have you decided to run this type of business? Absolutely. I've consulted with my husband, and he is certain that I can do it. It's a good way for me to earn an income. As compared to other countries, businesses in Thailand may be different. At the moment, a lot of foreigners are partners in Thai businesses. Now, let's discuss the idea thoroughly and make a good plan for my business. The first thing to plan is the location of your flower shop. Do you have any ideas? Yes, I've planned this for ages. My husband's family has a small shop available for rent now. It is in an ideal location, just opposite the hospital. So. Your potential customers would be visitors to the hospital patients. Is that right? Yes. I also think of other target groups, like the people who pass by, because the shop is on a main street in Bangkok. You have obviously thought this through. What else do you think? Ah, should we have a delivery service as well? That is a must. Now let's talk about the most important thing, which is what form my business ownership should take. What will suit me best? Yes, the business form will affect many other things like the budget, legal form, and the taxes of the shop. It seems that there are many things I've thought about. Thanks to my husband's suggestion that I have a talk with you. I've many customers who come to ask for my advice. Briefly, there are three forms of business ownership: a sole proprietorship, for which there is only one owner; a partnership. Owned by two or more persons who are called partners, and a corporation, which is a business formed by a group of persons called shareholders. It seems that I don't need to think much. There are just two of us who will be the owners of this shop we are discussing. So our shop will belong to both myself and my husband, who are partners, and it will be a partnership, right? Are you sure? Don't you want other people as your partners? I don't think so at this stage. What about you? Would you like to have any person or yourself join my business? Not now either, but I think you should find someone who is skilled in accountancy to help you. Yes, perhaps I can ask my sister to help us. We can hire her, right? Certainly, I think she must help us to set up your accounting system initially, and after that, she can be a part-time accountant for your shop. I need to talk with her tonight. Another thing is about money. Money is important everywhere. We should plan your financial resources, how much you need to set up your shop, and how much you need to meet your daily running costs. Have you thought about this? Just a little bit. I'm not sure whether my savings will be sufficient or not. I may need to borrow some from my parents. First, I need to consult with my sister. To determine all the expenses and estimate the investment cost for us. Good, good, but remember, your shop is a partnership. Everything in the business must be shared, both income and debts. Yes, actually, I should run my shop on my own 
and find other partners. It's quite risky in case I go bankrupt. I shouldn't have my husband share the responsibility, should I? No, certainly not. Let's talk about my potential customers. I think we should advertise our shop to other groups of customers as well. How about distributing leaflets to advertise your shop? Do you think it's necessary? Why not? It's one of the cheapest ways to get to a lot more people. You always have a lot of good ideas. Good man. Thanks. Situation เรื่องที่ 2.2.2 The organizational structure of your business The organizational structure of your business. Situation. William Chan, a Hong Kong businessman who is interested in setting up an import-export company in Thailand, is trying to figure out which organizational structure will suit him most. He has a talk with his Thai advisor Nietzsche, who is working in a business consultancy company. Listen to a brief on each organizational structure for businesses by Nietzsche, and answer the questions that follow. In general, every job in a business has certain duties. Or responsibilities those employees are obligated to perform. Authority, the right to make specific kinds of decisions and to direct the work of subordinates, is delegated to employees to allow them to meet their responsibilities. That is why a company should establish a proper organizational structure of the company. The organizational structures of businesses. Are varied, but the main concern is to divide all of the company's internal activities into defined jobs and to group these jobs in appropriate departments. The most common organizational structures are line, line and staff, and functional. The first line organization. Is as shown in chart A. Line organizational structure is an internal business structure in which every employee is a member of a direct chain of command, from the top executives down through the levels of management. Every person directly reports to a single supervisor who is superior in the organization. It is a kind of structure that authority flows in a direct line from top to all levels. The next structure is line and staff organization, as shown in chart B. It is a modification of the line organization. Staff specialists are added to handle certain specific duties, and they give advice to line managers. But do not normally have direct authority over the positions they advise. The functional structure is as shown in chart C above. It is an alternative way to organize a business by assigning managers the responsibility for all activities and decisions in certain defined functional areas of operations. This structure might have five managers supervising the workers, who perform distinctly different functions. In addition, there are three more types of organizations. These are divisional organizations, 
matrix organisations and committees. A divisional organisation is, as in chart D, created by the time the businesses grow. It may be divided into divisions by focusing on products, customers or geography. The matrix organisational structure, in chart E, is used by firms that must manage a number of one-time projects, such as road, dam or bridge building, construction of large aircraft or space exploration vehicles, or research investigations. It allows a project manager to exercise temporary authority over a number of specialists who also must report to different line managers for supervision in their specialities. A committee is a group of people assigned to discuss or to deal directly with a well-defined matter. While a business cannot be structured as a committee, Committees are frequently used to address particular matters within business organisations. Situation Rung T Song to Sam to Song. An application of office automation in a company. Two point three point two. An application of office automation in a company. Listen to the presentation on office automation by William Chan, a computer specialist from a Hong Kong import-export company. Situation. William Chan, the Hong Kong computer specialist, is conducting orientation and training on office automation for a group of new staff of an import-export company in Thailand. Firstly, please let me explain that office automation is a way of applying computers to assist with all aspects of traditional clerical and administrative work. Many organisations now use computers to do this in order to enhance their productivity. Computers are applied to many sectors, business, education, hospital, airlines and many other organisations. Office automation can increase the efficiency of your routine work because it is associated with the way you capture, manage, store, deliver and preserve documents, email, graphic images, web pages and all the other elements of communication that exist in an office. Now I'm studying a brochure received from Pacific Office Automation, a company in Thailand which provides a service from the establishment of computer networks and office automation to various companies. They supply a lot of multifunction office equipment like copier, printer and fax machines, which can provide faster and more efficient document workflow. This means a company can either manage to establish office automation itself or hire another company to manage the job. Next, I'll touch on examples of office automation. Since information resources of offices are in various forms, such as paper, film and electronically generated media, we need to use computers to manage and enhance the efficiency of these information resources. To do this, the following steps are necessary. A. Assigning responsibility for managing resources to each individual department or staff member. An office manager should assign staff to have responsibility for listings on the information retention schedule. This schedule identifies how long information is kept in the collection. When it is removed, 
and what its disposition will be. B. Selecting media. That is to select which kind of media is appropriate for storing each kind of information. C. Designing systems for housing and retrieving records. Lastly, to maintain electronic files, organisations use various forms of technology, for example, magnetic tapes, flexible disks, internal hard disks, removable hard disks and optical disks. These are called electronically generated storage media, which are used to store information. To give an example of equipment in office automation, we use a printer for reproducing collections of categorised data in databases and digitised representations of document images. Similarly, there are examples of technology which are used for managing documents in office automation. These are, for example, imaging systems, workflow software, document management software and optical storage technologies. That is all for my presentation today. Does anyone have any questions? จบได้หรอกหน่วยที่สอง